Come on, can you feel the spirit of the Lord rising? Sing, oh. seated this morning as our children come to bless us in song. Come on, give them a hand of encouragement this morning. Was it? 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the kids some more love. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise. Come on. Amen. Good morning and welcome. Welcome. Our kids are doing such a great job. Are you blessed this morning? That's the song. I'm so blessed. Amen. Welcome to Exciting Central Tampa. We are going to do our welcome song. Do we have any first time visitors with us this morning? Just wave your hand at me. Amen. Not you. All right. Praise the Lord. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. If you are online watching us, please, if this is your first time, put something in the chat. All right. But we're going to do what we do best. We love on folks. So stand to your feet one more time and let's greet each other in the name of Jesus this morning. This is the Lord's church where Jesus is Lord. is the Lord's church and Jesus is Lord. This is the church that's been established by His Word. This is the church that loves its people. The gates of hell shall not prevail. This is the Lord's church. This is the Lord's church. This is the Lord's church when Jesus is Lord. All right, love on somebody this morning. This is the Lord's church. 
Lord. Amen. All right. I'm going to ask our ushers. You may be seated as our ushers come forward. And we're going to prepare our hearts for our worship through our giving this morning. Bow your heads as we have our offertory prayer this morning. Dear Father God, Lord, we just thank you once again, Lord. This is your church, Father God. And Lord, uh, we are joyful to know that not even the gates of hell will prevail against it, Father. So Lord, right now, God, we've come to just give back, Father God. Our time of offering, Father, you have been so faithful to us, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you will continue to find us faithful, Lord, even in our giving, especially in our giving, Lord, of our resources, Father. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for those that will give, Lord. We thank you for those that may not have it to give, but desire, Father. We love you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. As we uh, play our offering song, we will ask you to come down joyfully as we give this morning. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver, and you can give by four methods. One, visit centraltampa.org and click the Give Online link. Two, text Exciting Central with no spaces to 73256. Three, Mail any contribution to our physical address at 2923 North Tampa Street. 4. In person during service. Everyone should give whatever they have decided in their heart. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. May God richly bless you.
Yes, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to have our morning announcements, and the choir will come back at that time. Amen. Welcome to the exciting Central News Network. Path Jail Ministry. We are starting Path, Fraternal Assistance and Transformational Help, a ministry designed to bless incarcerated individuals and their families. To meet the need, we're asking a few faithful men, at least eight, to serve in this ministry. Names of committed volunteers are needed as soon as possible to ensure clearance and background checks are finalized prior to mandatory training on February 4th. For more information, please speak with Pastor Zamor or Deacon Rashad Hines. Celebrate recovery. If you are ready to do intentional work of getting past hurts, habits, and hangups, Celebrate Recovery is for you. General and small group meetings for men and women will resume in March. Stay tuned for additional details. The Alabaster Jar, when we sit at the feet of Jesus. Ladies, join the Women Ministry from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, February 18th. As we kick off this year's theme, we are one in Jesus Christ, just like the woman who expressed her love for Jesus by washing his feet. We'll express our love and gratitude towards Christ during this time of fellowship. Invite a friend and meet us in the fellowship hall. We can't wait to see you. And those are today's announcements. If you'd like to replay this announcement, visit the Central YouTube channel at ECTBC5412. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you and God bless.
excellent his name is. There's nobody like him. He's perfect in all his ways. Everything that he does is good. Every word that he speaks, it will happen. It is an amen because it's already so. And we just worship him right now. And because he is who he is, we've got to every day present our bodies a living sacrifice. Do I have a witness? Oh. Come on, Sopranos, present. Thank you. I want to acknowledge the presence here of uh, Theodora Mason, who is here. here with us. Put your hands together for our, our guest. Amen. Thank you so much. I also want to, to acknowledge, I think we have, uh, there, we have two people here uh, from Colombia and Venezuela, respectively, who speak no English at all. Um, Sister Priscilla, do both of them have mics or just one? Just one. 
The other one here needs a mic, um, Brother Freddy. If you can get him an earpiece so he can uh, participate in the service, that would be good. He's right back there, okay? All right. Thank you so much for, for being here to, today in the house of the Lord. Men, men, the word goes out. This is the last Sunday you can respond. Please, if you would like to be part of our prison ministry, I am so encouraged at what God is doing. Our prison ministry, we need you to give us today your name. Whether you think you will become uh, available in, the, in a few weeks or a few months, we still need your name today, okay? Because if you decide to join in two months from now, you will not be able to because you would not have gone through the necessary mandatory screening, fingerprinting, and also uh, security training that the jail is going to give. So, so brothers, please, a uh, few of you have responded, and we are so far very happy. If you would like to be part of this, please. Ladies, you also can participate. The women's prison ministry is going to start right after this, so you can still also participate. And uh, part of the, of the prison ministry that begins in February has a component for women to assist in the community also when they re-enter community. So please, women and men, please, uh, if you would like to be part of the women's ministry in jail, please submit your name one time so you can get, I think, um, Dick, that would be the best thing. If you would like to be part of the jail ministry now or in the future, submit your name to him so you can get, be part of the clearance, okay? The security clearance and the training. For all of you who are members, we do have a meeting immediately after we are finished and our guests have left and our friends have left and our patrons have left. All members, please remain behind for a meeting. There will be no classes. The meeting is not going to be scheduled to not exceed an hour. So please remain behind. Are you ready for the word of God? Are you ready for the word of God? Please stand up and grab your Bible. If you have your Bible, grab your Bible. My spirit is God breathed. God's word is God breathed. Therefore, God's word gives me life. I am ready to hear it. I am ready to heed it. I am ready to be transformed. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. I can hear in my ears, I can hear in my spiritual ears the sound of blessing. I literally can hear, hear there is. The Lord is doing something, uh, not just in Tampa, but here in our church. And I can sense what the Lord is doing. I can sense the excitement in the spirit. I don't know if you can, but I can, I can sense that I am, I am so anticipatory of what God is already doing and is bringing us into it. Don't leave, don't leave. Let me, let me do, this, do this one line of a song for me um, because it's part of my sermon, Thou Art Worthy. Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, glory and honor, glory and honor and praise, for thou hast created as all things created, thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are created thou art worthy O oh Lord stand with me I want to see it one more time <clears throat> thou 
art worthy. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O oh Lord. Oh, to receive, to receive glory. up today. But Father, we come to you this morning to let you know that you are worthy of all of the honor. Without you, we can do nothing at all. Nothing. It is in you that we live and that we move and that we have our being. And all good and perfect gifts cometh from above, from the Father of light, the Father of love in whom there is no variability or shadow of turning. Everything we are, we owe to you. We have and can be nothing without you. Therefore, we give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. And we thank you today. We glorify you, we magnify you. And we ask, my God, that you be pleased with our worship in Jesus' name. Please be seated. <clears throat> <clears throat> keys to healthy relationship we are in key number five honoring honoring <clears throat> at the beginning of the series we said that humanity lost in the garden of eden lost relationship that's what we lost and when we lost the relationship with god we lost all other relationships went down the drain. All other relationships, Adam and Eve, uh, their kids, had the first domestic battle. Can you imagine? If you think you have some problems in your house, <clears throat> everybody does. From that first sin, there was chaos in Adam and Eve's family and has been in everybody's family because relationships have suffered. Jesus Christ came to restore right relationships to God. That's why he came, to restore us, to show us what God is like. Show us the image of God and then restore us and transform us into the image of God. And therefore, we are preaching these kinds of sermons to help transform us uh, into the character of Jesus Christ. You can only be transformed into what you know. Therefore, we have to know Jesus Christ experientially. So we can be transformed into what our knowledge is of him until the day that we will know him perfectly in heaven and we will be transformed into that perfect knowledge. <clears throat> so in an effort to transform ourselves into a church that has healthy relationships, all kinds of relationships, we are doing these sermons. We have discussed love as a key, humility, service, patience, and now we are talking about honoring. Our springboard text comes from Romans 12, 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfast in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. That summarizes everything we should be and do. That scripture is powerful. We have seen uh, that there are three basic social cultural models 
that the whole world is made up of. When Adam and Eve sinned, immediately shame rushed in. They, they were ashamed. Immediately, they became guilty from an innocent state to a guilty state, and immediately they became afraid. Those three states are the three cultural models or paradigms that rule social morality across the entire earth in different distributions of those three things. In the West, uh, European cultures are based on innocence versus guilt. Most of the morality of the West is not really based on Bible. Please understand that. It's not as much as you think it is. If it were, you would not have 400 plus years of slavery. Because with slaves, literally, with slave masters, you know, in church praising the Lord and singing the hymns of the faith while they are cruelly treating people. Why? Because it was legal. You understand? Our morality is driven by our courts. And the court decides what's moral for us. So when the court decides one day at the swoop of the pen that it's okay for a man and a woman to marry, everybody in America agreed. There was not a fight, there was not a riot, there was not nothing. It's now the law. That's what it is. All the Congress and everybody starts sending budgets to accommodate that law. When that law changed. And so if we can make something legal, we can make it right. That's the Western mindset. <clears throat> In the southern mindset, which is Africa, it is predominantly power versus fear. Power versus fear. Anything that happens to you, we ascribe it to a power. If your foot swells, somebody did you something. Somebody did it. There's a power. And we, we ascribe everything. If it doesn't rain long enough, there's somebody's doing it or there's some power. And we think powers are always trying to dominate us. And so fear is how you really, truly manage black people fear make them afraid and or the other way which is the reverse of that is empower and so if you that's why it's very difficult in african cultures for there to be togetherness without one man at the top because the power has to be ascribed to somebody so if you remove that one person you destroy the whole power system and that's what you see with Martin Luther King and a whole bunch of people who rise up are shut down, and when they are, nothing happens anymore. Then you have the East and Mid-East culture, which is based on honor versus shame. In the African cultures, we have a lot of that also, because we are a tribal culture. The Western culture is based on the value of the individual. All of society is based on the value of the individual, not the value of the family, not the value of the group, not the value of the nation, we are based on individual. What I want, my right as a human being, is what drives our social paradigm in America. Not so in most cultures. It is the family right that is first. And your family represents you. And so, so the fact that Adam, Adam's fall affected all of his children is uh, shame versus uh, it, 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 it is a shame versus honor model. When you do something in that kind of culture, everybody in the family pays. When Achan stole that thing in the tent, everybody died. That's, that's that culture. Your behavior affects everybody. So Adam sinned, all of his posterity got hurt. Everybody died too. His consequence was everybody's consequence. And so Jesus Christ came to reverse the shame. Interestingly, the first thing he does, he covers the shame of Adam. Covers him. It's part of that culture. Christ came and, and, and he came to, to pay the price. And so in that culture, please understand, you must understand the Bible from that cultural mindset. In that culture, uh, shame can only be reversed with shame. So Jesus Christ, or a member of the family who caused the shame, must pay the price. And so Jesus became a human being to be a member of our family so that he can pay the shame price for us. And he was publicly shamed, publicly naked. He paid the spiritual price for us on the cross. 
shedding his blood and satisfying the righteous justice of the Father. That's what Christ did. It was a payment. And when he did, it improved the family position, the family name. Jesus gave us his name. You understand? So now our honor in the kingdom is being reestablished because we have a new name. And that name is righteous and it has honor to it. Very important. The reverse. Adam gave us sin. Christ gave us righteousness. And all of us now can come boldly before the Father without shame. We will break that down in just a while so you understand that. When Jesus uh, uh, went to the cross and paid the penalty of sin, the glory he got was for us. And so we read in John chapter 17, verse 5, Jesus says, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So he's, he's saying, I'm getting ready to go to the cross and pay the penalty, and I am going to rise from the dead. So glorify me when I go down into this grave to pay the penalty. I want you to glorify me back with the honor I had before. And then he says something in verse 22. And the glory which you gave me, I have given to them. That they may be one, just like we are. And so Jesus brought us back into the family and made us one. And we have the glory, which is the character of God, now inside of us. It may not look so right now when I look at you. It may not look so when I observe your behavior. But you have the full character of God inside of you. Because you have a new nature. The battle now is for that character to dominate you instead of the character of the enemy that has always dominated us. And every single day I live and every single day you live and yield to the spirit of God, you are being transformed into Jesus Christ. And it's a beautiful thing to watch. It happens so slowly you realize you're changing. But you are changing from grace to grace and glory to glory. You are just changing. Until one day we no longer will look at Christ through the gifts and through prophecy and through the written word of God. But we will see him and we shall be like him because we'll see him just like he is. And we shall be like him. This is beautiful. Until that time he is transforming us into the image of Christ. And that is, that is you know, we've been talking about order. The key to, you know, to, the key to an honor society is relationship. It is the number one thing. It's relationship. The strength of the relationship of the family is the strength of the community. If the families are weak, the community is weak. And so you strengthen families, you strengthen their nations. That's how God did it. And the first key to honor is honoring God. The first key is honoring God. Honor is God's system. It's his way. To honor someone means to respect them and to esteem them. The degree of honor we bestow to someone varies depending on their character, on their attributes, on their abilities, and on their achievements. It varies. In today's sermon, we are going to look at honoring God, how to honor God our highest call and our highest ambition. And so we're going to look at ways to honor God. Five ways. Number one, we honor God with attitude. By the way, there are notes in your, in, in your pews and you can fill it out as you go. So if you look in your pews, there are no notes and it just keeps you, keeps you active and it keeps you um, make sure that you are engaged. Some people might keep them from sleeping too, I think. Um, so how to honor God? We honor God with our attitude. It all begins with attitude. Everything begins with attitude or mindset. Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Mind, mindset, attitude. It's all about attitude. Attitude is one's predisposition to act in a particular way. Your attitude tells me how you are going to act. It forecasts your actions. It is a bent or a predisposition. It is a forecast of how one is prone to receive or respond to people, 
things and experiences. Your attitude tells everything. And with God, it starts there. It is one's inclination. No one knows your thoughts, but when your thoughts get organized, it forms an attitude. And it's now intelligible. So I don't know what you are thinking, but when your thoughts get organized, it is now forecasted or actually transmitted and it can be intercepted by any other spirit. Human beings can look at people and tell what their attitude is. Demons are much better at it. And so you are forecasting how you are inclined to behave based on the attitude that you present. Some of us think behavior is all God is concerned about, but no. You know how when you ask your child to do something and they, they do it anyway, but they do it with a, a long mouth? Are you happy? That, 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 that behavior is not, does not conform to the character you want them to have. Although they obeyed you, but they did not have the right attitude. Therefore, the obedience does not count. Attitude is what God is looking for most of all. And there are four basic kind of attitudes. Number one, the first one is regard. 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 To see God and his kingdom from a favorable point of view. Always have good regard for God. Always put your view of the kingdom forefront. Kingdom things should be better than non-kingdom things. Am I with you? In other words, regard the kingdom. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. It didn't say if I sin. No, it says if I regard it, if I have a favorable view of sin, God says I'm not going to hear you. If I have a favorable, if there are some sins I just think I like, God says I can't hear you. You have a bad attitude. You can't regard iniquity. You cannot esteem iniquity. You cannot put weight on iniquity. And so that's what the Bible says. Regard. It's important. How you regard God, how you, how, you, how you view God. And so it is that because we are living in the world and the world has sipped into us, many of us like non-kingdom things better than kingdom things. When you go to the store to buy a dress, you have to ask yourself, is this conforming to the kingdom or is it conforming to the world? That's, that's my regard. Brothers, when you, when, 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 you, know, when you turn on that, that show that you want to watch, you must ask yourself the question, does that show regard the kingdom? Does it have a favorable point of view? Does it have a favorable view in kingdom? Or is this all just the world character trying to come at me? Almost everything you watch on TV is not, in, including the news, is not designed to inform, it's designed to influence. Somebody is trying to get you to change. And as much as people complain about church and about preaching and all that you don't seem to realize the world is preaching too and they're preaching loud they're blaring they'll be wooing you in many people just love love their music some people ipod or or, or, or their playlist don't even have a christian song in their playlist think about that not not even a worship song in their playlist all the things that we regard that we digest, it tells your attitude to God. The second is respect, is a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their ability, their qualities, or their achievements. Respect. We have to have respect. And, and, and keep, keep looking, at, examining yourself. Here are some things that may suggest attitude. If I had an employee who was always late, I would say to myself, when it's time for his annual evaluation, I would suggest that that guy does not want his job. And you would not get a favorable view. But if we come to church late as a matter of, 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 of habit, it may suggest something about attitude. There, there are just some things you can't just keep doing because you're not coming here for for the deacons or for the pastor, you're coming here to worship the Lord. You're coming here for the God of heaven. And last week, a deranged person was the first person to come to church. He came to church before anybody else. I thank God he came to church though. 
And I think we have to pray for him. Yeah. No matter how we present, no matter how we approach people, we still must see everyone as a potential candidate for salvation. Everyone. I mean, all kinds of lunatics came to see Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, he went to see them. He took a boat and drove and went to see a dude that was no chains could hold him. That's the power of Jesus. When we approach people, we approach them with a power that's greater than the one there. Next, next, next. You know, the way we give our gifts at the altar. Christ said that people were coming with lame sheep. Sheep they know would die anyway. Sheep that had a broken foot. And Christ says, would you give that to your governor? So the way we give offerings to God is an act of worship. All those indicate our sign of respect to God. The way we praise, you can't praise like this. This is an attitude. Everybody, the people up there are killing themselves. You know, they're doing the best they can to rain down the glory of God. And some people are like this. That says attitude. In an honor, shame society, you cannot go in front of a king like that. It is your life. If you go in front of a king with an unhappy face, he kills you. That's the culture. That is the culture. It is the culture. Understand, Christ himself, the Bible says, come into his presence with, come into his courts with praise. That's why he says, come into his gates with praise. And into his courts, the Bible says, thanksgiving. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. That's how we come. So when you come, come with your praise on. Come with your praise attitude. I know some things may be hurting you from home. But when you come in the presence of God, don't worry about those things. You cast those things aside. And when you come in the presence of God, give him the praise that is due to his name in the reflection of your attitude in church. Don't let your problems weigh you down and deny God his praise. The third one is reverence. 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 In the Old Testament, reverence involves two words, and one of them is yare, and the other one is shaka. Yare, the root word yare means fear. Fear, 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 fear. The Bible says God is greatly to be feared. There's a sense in which you just don't play around with him. Fear. And the second word shaka means falling down. In our Western cultures, we worship on our bottom. In the East, not so. I see somebody's trying to go somewhere right now. Well, you could stay here and I hear a GPS telling somebody where to go. I heard it now. <laughs> That's okay. But we don't worship. In the temple, there was no place to sit. No chairs in the temple. In the holy place, in the, in the, in the holy of holies, and also in the holy place. No chairs. Everybody, when they came to church, shock. That's how you worshipped. That's, like, that's how they did it. And, and you see it because I did several forms of martial arts. In martial arts, because they are Eastern-based arts, they are all kinds. They are Brazilian ones and they are, they are African ones also. You know, Kapaweda is African. But they are the Eastern ones. When you go to a, to a dojo, I'm... Guys on the camera, I'm getting ready to go down. When you go, there are ways that you do it in, uh, in a, in a, in, in, so when you, when you meet your fellow uh, 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 martial artists, you bow. Everybody does it. Everybody is required to show respect and you bow. The thing about bowing is not to watch people in their eyes. Because in that culture, watching eyes is confrontation. So if you respect somebody, you don't watch them in the eyes. That culture has seeped into Africans a lot. So growing up in the Caribbean, when missionaries came down, they would try and tell you, you know, look at me when I talk to you. But no, it's because I respect it, I put my head down. If I lock eyes with you, it means you and I are peer. It means I'm going to joke with you. It means boundaries are going to change if you and me are equal. But you, because you are higher... I give you honor. But when the, when the sensei, which I was one, comes in, as soon as a sensei comes in, 
The first person to see the sensei shouts, Sensei Ray, Sensei Ray. And everybody goes down. Here's the way you go down. And that's Eastern culture, by the way. Left foot goes first. Then right foot goes down. The reason why left foot goes first is because in that culture, masters and their schools, Jesus Christ in his culture, that's how it was too. You had a master and always all his students are following him. So down the streets are always masters and their followers. And your followers' job is to defend you. That's why uh, Simon Peter had a sword. People walked with swords back then. Okay? Their job is to defend you. And so you, you, you put your left foot down first because when you're going down, you may have to come right back up. And the swords that they use does not have a lock. Japanese swords have no locks. Most of those Shaolin swords have no locks. So if you lean forward, the sword is just going to fly out. So you, the only way you can keep the sword in it is to keep your hand on it this way. So when you go down, if you have to come right back up, you can do it this way. Now, if somebody other than your grandmaster comes, because other masters can visit, but in that time, masters can visit camps just to kill your master and to take over that entire village. So you may not be sure who a master is. So when your left foot goes down, then right foot goes down, and you, you sit that way. That's how you sit for the whole session while they teach. For a whole hour, we sit that way. If a fly is on your ears, you leave it. If a mosquito is biting you, you don't touch it. You don't move. You sit like this. When you go down for, for Sensei Ray, you go down with your left hand first. Just like this. Why? Because if that guy in front of you is not honest and genuine, you want to be able to come right back up with your hands there. That's why hands are here. Because one hand is holding your sword. I'm going somewhere with the illustration. When your grandmaster comes, you don't do left hand. You go straight down. You fall. You fall. And you stay that way. Why are you doing this? You are offering him your neck. You are offering him your neck. And you are offering him your hands. Interestingly, and I have explained that to you before, that's where the whole idea of prayer comes from. When you go before an eastern king, you go before him on your knees. Okay? Same thing in the dojo. If while we are seated in Caesar, that's called Caesar, the grandmaster calls you. You don't stand up on your knees. That's how you do it. You stay on your knees. Now, when a king calls you, you come to the king on your knee with your hands up, same way. Your hand is saying, I have no weapon. And it's saying, I am clean towards you. You and me have the same mission. If the king agrees and he has not heard anything bad about you, he takes your hands in his hand. That's the prayer posture. Just like that. Okay? That's the prayer posture. He puts his hand in yours, and that says, we are one. We are one. Okay. If you look at 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, <coughs> Timothy says, um, Paul says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting holy hands. That's what he's saying. Without wrath, that is agitation of soul or doubting. What is he saying? He's saying when you come before the king, you can't come doubtful because you get, it kills you. you. You can't come with eyes that are shifting. You can't come as if you, you're afraid because it means you did something bad. That's what he's saying. 
So when you come to God, you can't come with doubt and with wrath in your heart. Because the king wants to know, are you with me? That's the prayer posture. Respect. Respect. But the next is resolve. Resolve. When you come, you must come with confidence. Confidence. So he says, come boldly. Come boldly. Not to be afraid. Why? Your king is not going to hurt you. Your king is also your father. So when we come, we come with hands. We ask God to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us. And we come boldly with resolve, with confidence that God is on our side. Honor, the second thing is honor God with your affections. With your affections. Affections come from the word affect, which means feelings or impact. If something affected you, it means it impacted you. So we honor God with our affect, with our feelings. King David had great affection for God. And one of the ways to test your affection is the way you give. So first, Chronicles 29 verse 3. Moreover, he says, because I have set my affections on the house of my God, I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, my own special treasure of gold and silver. He's saying, I gave already, but because of my affection for God, I'm going to give over and above of all the gold because he loved the Lord. If you see the sacrifices that were given, it was an incredible amount. So much so that there was a, a, a building attached to the, holy, uh, to the back of the Holy of Holies that was just for the treasure. The treasure of the king stayed in the temple because he gave it and it has always been there until they would have raided it during uh, fights. Uh, set your affection on things above. Set your affections on things above. The things that move you. The things that impact your ability to act. Let them be God things. Love the things of God. Don't set your affections on the worldly things. Set it on the kingdom. Make yourself not like certain things. No matter how nice they look, how nice they sound, if there's a whole bunch of nudity and cussing and vulgarity in a movie, don't watch it. He said, but it's a good movie. Just don't watch it. Put your affection on the things of God. Uh, and so the different ways, uh, different kinds of affection is one, admiration. Admiration is a feeling of wonder and pleasure and approval. Admire God. Admire God. Admire God. When you admire God, he will get, uh, he, he will, he'll get your attention. Number two, adoration. This refers to public adulation as what is given after a speech. The word adoration comes from two words. Ad means towards an orator. Orator. Towards the orator. Adoration is towards oration. So when the way you clap for a president and give him a standing ovation, that's honor, that's adoration. God wants that. He wants us to behave that way towards him. And give him that kind of adulation. People in the Bible who have had those kind of adulations, God has killed. When Nebuchadnezzar gave up his speech, God turned him into an animal. When Herod gave a public speech and the people said his voice is like the voice of a God, God ate him up with worms also. God is very cautious for that kind of glory. So when he sent Moses to go and speak, Moses wanted to be an orator. God says, I, I, didn't, I don't need an orator. I don't need somebody to match wits with Pharaoh. All right, and then the third is awe, awe, a mix of dread and fascination for God, being fascinated, fascinated by what God is doing, being able to see the presence of God, being able to see the movement of God, being able to be in awe, sense what God is doing, and be in awe, fascinated. The third is honor God with your actions, with your actions, okay? Honor God with your actions. Um, the first action is celebration. Praise, praise. Praise God vigorously. Don't worry. In this church, you don't have to worry. You can dance. You can get your whole 4,000 steps during prison worship. I'll tell you how many I got. Actually, I have, I have my watch on this, this hand. Oh, I didn't get much this morning. I got 2,955 steps this morning. Just from praising the Lord. Amen? It's okay. 
dance before the Lord, but be vigorous in your praise. Don't praise half-heartedly. It's your heart he's concerned about. Praise. The Bible says next is compliance. Compliance, which is submission to God's will. Comply to what he says. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. You can only resist if you submit. You can only resist the devil if you submit to the Father. Submit yourself to God. You will have the grace and strength to resist the devil. Submit to God. Submit to his will. All faith. I think somebody said something good this morning in Facebook. One of you did and I read it. Uh, I thought it was very good. All faith is going to be tested. All faith. God wants to put you through a regimen of tests to see if at the end of it your faith is still intact. Can this person die and can you still be faithful? Can you go through this job loss and still be faithful? Can you get this foreclosure and still be faithful? God will test you to see if your faith can take it. Amen? So you let the Lord know no matter what, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. Uh, we, 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 there's nothing going to make us change our mind. There are people who have sun apart and their faith held up. Some were boiled in oil. Their faith held up. Oh yeah. As a result, we have the Bible. Conformity is number three. Total and unconditional obedience to God. That's discipleship. Learning to observe all things. You are not a disciple truly until you have gotten to the point where you can observe everything God, obey everything he says. There's none that is optional. Obey every, everything God says, obey it. Have an attitude of total obedience. And the next is complicity. That means represent God and his kingdom with integrity. You are an accomplice with God. You represent him in everything. We read in Colossians 2, 3 and verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart. Put your all into it. Put your all into your ministry. Not you may be there, you might. No, put your all into it. There are some people in this church who honor God that way. And I, and I love it so much. Yeah, put your all into it. Put your all. He says, whatever you do, do it with all your heart as working for the Lord, knowing that the Lord, that of the Lord you, should, you shall receive the inheritance, an inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Number four, honor God with your access. Access. We honor God by trusting uh, him and granting him uh, access to us. Access to our spirit. Free access to our spirit by being one with him. Total ass access to the core of our being. That's where our attitude comes from, our heart. Let God have all of your heart. All of your heart. Serve the Lord all of your heart. Don't reserve any part of it from God. Let God have all of your spirit, your core being, all of it, God. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. This is the great and first commandment. Honor begins with the heart. It cannot be faked. It cannot be contrived by emotions of the soul or the rituals of the body. God will discard your rituals. He'll discard all of your acts of worship if your heart is not with him. If he does not have access to all of you. And so, and so, God needs total access to your spirit. He needs total aspect to your, access to your soma. That's your body. Not just your spirit. Your body. Your body. Your body. Because God specifies he wants all of your heart. It doesn't mean that he doesn't want your body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are not your own. You are a body of a price. Therefore, God should have access to your body. Your whole body belongs to him. All of it. Romans 12, 1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice. That's not my body. It belongs to God. I use it to serve God. I don't use it for my own, uh, to call the shots as I want. And then our substance. He must have access to our substance, our money. Here's what the Bible says. Honor the Lord. That's Proverbs 3, 9. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your increase, which is your profit. What you possess and your profit. Honor God with your money. 
That's very important. Honor him. When you obey God by tithing and giving back to him, he gives you in return access to economies. He blesses you with access. He blesses you with gifts. He blesses you with more. You cannot outgive God. You give God, he's going to give you way more than you can ever give him. He'll open the windows of heaven. Try it. Try it. That is the one time God says, try me. He is going to bless you more than you can contain it. And then the last, honor God through your arbitrator. The arbitrator. Uh, that is your, the, 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 your lawyer. That is your mediator. You cannot honor God and not honor Jesus Christ. You, 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 cannot, you cannot just believe. And that's why many people who are Jehovah Witnesses and who have some of the faiths that deny Christ, that's, that's, that's cultish. You know why? Because you cannot honor the Father and not honor the Son. Jews would do that. They, 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 they believe in God, but they don't believe in Jesus Christ. They are dishonoring God because the Bible says it in John 5, 22. It says, the Father judges no one, but the Son has given all but the Son. But the Son and has given all judgment to the Son. Verse 23, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whosoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father. So the Bible says, if you don't honor the Son, you don't honor the Father. What God wants to do is, as I close, God's plan and purpose is for us to display the glory of and character of God and fill the earth with it. Why? Because Jesus Christ was given a name that's above every name and that name has power and that name has glory and we bear that name and God wants us to fill the earth with God's character. Therefore, the more you can use the name of Jesus Christ is the better for him. Please understand, the more. Taking God's name in vain means taking it but not using it. You have it. It's on you. You have the authority to use it. Every time you use it, he gets glory. He wants glory. That's why he made you and me. He made you and me so his image and glory will fill the earth. So use the nature he's given you. Use the character he's given you. Use the name he's given you. When you pray, God will answer your prayer. Why? He'll answer your prayer because he wants glory. As you pray, construct your prayer so that God gets glory. In every situation that befalls you, when you pose it to God as the reason why he should answer your prayer, implicate the glory. Because that's what he wants. Be smart in this. You tell God why you want him to heal your body. They saw a man who was blind. Master, who, who, who did sin? That this man was born blind. Him or his parents. Christ says none of them. But for the glory of God. The sickness exists. So Jesus can heal it and get glory. Your situation exists. So Jesus can fix it and get glory. Do you understand? He wants the glory. And that's why the verse says in John 14. And I, and I, and I close. John 14 and verse 13. Whatsoever you ask in my name. That will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Your answered prayer gives God glory. He wants you to do miracles, so he gets glory. Every time Jesus did a miracle, glory. The Father wants to glorify the Son. That's why he gave him the powerful name. So you and I can use that name and give him glory. Let that name fill the earth. So please, when you pray, construct your prayers somehow to reflect glory. Tell the Father what glory he would get if he would put that money in your pocket. This is how I would glorify your name. It's never about you. God is not just blessing you for your sake. He didn't create you for your sake. He said, and for his pleasure you were created. You were not created for your own self to do what you want and get pleasure. You were created for him. So give him pleasure. Do his will. And let him work through you to transform the world so his glory and character can be in the world. Because we have a meeting, we have to end here today. But I want us to glorify. Next week, we are going to talk about, next week is going to be 
uh, uh, I encourage parents to be here next week because we are going to talk about the rest of the people who we should honor in a very unusual way. We'll talk about it next week. But please stand with me. Let us close our service. Yeah. Hallelujah. Honor the Father. Honor him. Honor him. Honor him. Honor him. Honor him. Give him glory. All the glory, all the honor. Honor him. Honor him. In the West, we don't understand honor very well. We don't. We are going to sing a verse of a song as we wrap up. Uh, if you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, then we ask you to come and accept him publicly. Say, Pastor, why public? Because that's how that society works. Public. Christ, had, Christ couldn't have died secretly in jail. You would not be saved. It has to be public. When you understand it. Come, don't be afraid. Come. If you'd like to be baptized, come. If you'd like to be part of this church, come. If you would like prayer for any aspect of your life, we ask you as the singing starts, just come down. Oh,
Just go. He has his. It's okay. Dig it. Pastor, he has his. Okay. Pastor Zed, can you join them, please? And let somebody else lead. Okay. Let's put the mic down. Sister Beverly Rampersad. Uh, it is. It is okay for me to say that. Uh, we are going to pray for her because of a diagnosis she received that is not favorable. And therefore, um, uh, some people have already known what that is. Um, our Lord takes care. He can handle that. <laughs> There's a name that's above that name. Amen. There's a name that's above that name. Amen. And so, we are going to pray for her your hands on her. If you are a deacon, come also. If you are annoying, if you are if you're ordained, come. If you are ordained deacon, come and put your hands on her. return to you void your word is power the word that I speak to you Jesus said the flesh profits nothing but the words I speak to you they are power and they are life and Jesus Christ healed that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah that he took upon us all of our iniquities and by his stripes we are healed. Healing has been provided for in the atonement of Jesus Christ. Therefore we come and we are making a claim against the provision of the New Testament that offers to the children freely healing for their bodies. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask, Father, that you grant healing to her body. And declare it to be so by faith because you have given me the authority to do that so by faith we lay hold on it and we declare it to be so now in Jesus name and speak the word of authority that whatever is growing in her body that is not supposed to be there and it's not in heaven let it be done on earth as it is in heaven thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven it is not so in heaven therefore we want that condition to not be so for her and we ask and receive by faith that she is declared healed it's a declaration we make we declare it in the name of Jesus Christ that she be healed we declare it by faith and we ask our father we don't demand we ask but you said the prayer of faith shall you didn't say might you said shall therefore in Jesus name we believe and we receive whatever you ask he says believe you have received it and you shall receive it therefore we believe it father we pray that you get glory in this get glory pastor Rennie is involved in all kinds of medical solutions If you don't help his wife 
all of those solutions do not amount to the power of God. They don't. So we are calling then on you. Only you can do this. Marvel and baffle the medical community by her results. Let them know unequivocally that a miracle happened and use her as a billboard in the medical world that God is above every single medical doctor and every diagnostician, every apparatus and every procedure. We receive it and we thank you for it. We ask you to forgive her of all sins. You said that in your word. In the same verse said, and if they have committed sins, it shall be forgiven them. Therefore, forgive her of all sins, we pray. Everyone, in the name of Jesus Christ, let God's people say, Amen. let God's people say, Amen. let God's people say, Amen. hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I saw After we sing our doxology, well, thanks again for coming to the house of God. Uh, right after the doxology, um, as our patrons and guests leave, members remain behind for our church conference meeting.